Okay. Age is overrated. Quote by my dad. Why do we accept the misconception that age is the most important indicator of success, of maturity, of experience? What difference does it make if you start a startup company or join another company when you're 16, 45, or even 80? Ideas and achievements aren't less valid because of an individual's age or perceived maturity. What do I mean by this? Well, if I was standing on this stage today and looked differently than what I did, would your thoughts on me change? What if I was a girl wearing a neon pink dress and mismatched socks? What if I was a man wearing a tux with a tie and everything? If I was older, would your thoughts on me change then? What if I was a man in his mid-50s, or a woman in her 80s? Now, a lot of you will be quick to answer no to these questions and defend yourselves. My thoughts aren't as fickle to change based on age or appearance, and I don't blame you. I would have said the exact same thing. But when faced with the situation firsthand, I can guarantee you some of your thoughts would change. Earlier last year, I was able to participate in the Global Network of Religion for Children's fifth forum that was held here in Panama, or GNRC for short. What the GNRC is, it's a company that holds conferences and forums in a whole bunch of places in around, around the world in order to address and find solutions to problems that face the youth. This fifth forum was held in order to address the staggering, staggering amount of children around the world who suffer from violence. What was unique about this forum, though, in comparison to all the others, is that for the first time in the company's history, they were letting kids, 60 of us to be exact, become active participants in the span of this three-day conference. Out of the 60 kids, 30 were chosen here in Panama and 30 internationally. I was one of the lucky 30 kids chosen here in Panama. I initially got involved when members of the GNRC came to my synagogue and asked them to send kids who could represent the religion. The idea was to have the most ethnically and religiously diverse conference in order to spread the messages and ideas we learned, not only through the typical conventional communicational methods like social media and the newspaper, but through the religious ones as well. At first, I was skeptical. actually scratched that. I was freaking out. I didn't understand why a group of 500 plus adults who were all successful in their own ways, who were heads of NGOs, created their own companies, and worked for the UN, would want to listen to a 15-year-old at the time who had no PhD, no masters, or any degree for that matter. And quite frankly, I didn't have a clue what to do. All these questions were running through my head. What if they didn't listen to me? What if my information was incorrect? What if I humiliated myself? See, I, like a lot of other people in this world, both youth and adult alike, fell prey to the idea that my age makes me unworthy compared to others. See, as we grow up, there's this unseen timeline kind of dictating what we should do in our lives and when. For as long as I could remember, I've had this timeline imprinted into my brain. Graduate high school with decent grades, hopefully. Get into a good university, become a lawyer, and then be successful. Only when I was older, more matured, and more experienced could I be successful. This timeline was the exact reason why I was so scared to participate in this forum. Except, this reasoning is flawed. Human lives aren't linear. There isn't a prerequisite for every action we go through, or a definite order in which they should be completed. See, human lives aren't Christmas cookies. We aren't cut out to be perfect shapes, or have the perfect ratio of sugar and butter. It doesn't work that way. Which is why, despite my invisible timeline, I was filled with this power, this sense that maybe for once, I could change the world. 
or at least influence it in some way. See, out of the oops, sorry. Okay, out of the multitude of facts that I learned at this conference, two have stuck. One, youth empowerment is double-sided. There's the youth's perspective, and then there's the adult's perspective. And two, youth isn't an age. It's not defined by a specific range of numbers. Rather, it's the idea of change. And it's the idea of being driven by optimism. It's the idea that the world is filled with endless possibilities, just waiting for you to grab them. See, youths should be treated as peers, as partners, not as subordinates. The adults can learn as much from the youth as the youth could learn from them. Which brings us to the question, how can you be an empowerer? Well, firstly, you can try to listen. And I know this seems quite simple, but just think back on your conversations that you've had today. How many times have you been interrupted? How many times have you interrupted somebody else? See, when you're having a conversation with someone, you need to be able to actually hear and understand what they're saying. And what better way to do that than to listen? Be interested, ask questions, and be respectful. Two, you have to be able to relish in others' success and not flaunt your own. See, when you're having a conversation with someone about their ideas and their achievements, don't try to stick in your own because you think they're better. Because you don't know how hard it could have been for that one person to get where they were. And lastly, which in my opinion is probably the hardest one, is to empower yourself, which goes hand in hand with believing in yourself. See, if you don't believe in yourself, you don't open yourself to the possibility that others can believe in you. And this problem isn't age specific. Let me give you an example. My dad once sent me an email, an email titled Mediocre Man, because even though my dad isn't old, he's older than me, and he still uses email. And in this email, he went into detail about how he was a 52-year-old man and he hadn't accomplished all that he wanted. In his eyes, he wasn't successful, but he wasn't the worst. And now, I have told him multiple times how proud I am of him, how I admire his achievements as him, and his personality in general, but he doesn't believe me, because he doesn't believe in himself. Because if you're not open to believing in yourself, you're not open to others believing in you. Let me give you another example. One of my best friends is an extremely talented graphic design artist. Despite the fact that me and my friends constantly tell her how talented she is, how gifted she is, she doesn't believe us because she doesn't believe in herself. And this goes hand in hand with empowerment. See, if you can't empower yourself, how do you open yourself to the possibility of being empowered? Now, going back to the youth, Adults have been kind of failing to empower us for a long time, but we've been failing to empower ourselves. How many kids in the audience can proudly say that they have not a single regret in their life, or that they're proud of what they've done up until this moment? Yeah, cool, okay. <laughs> so I was able to participate in one of the three special panels that this conference had, where groups of specialists would get together and talk about solutions in front of an audience. In the panel I got to speak to, one of the members was Dr. Esmeralda Rosemena, and for the sake of my dignity and to not butcher their last names, I am just going to say T. <laughs> Before the panel started, she handed every single member a business card. To my surprise, she even handed me one. Somebody who, quite frankly, 
has never received a business card from anybody of importance. She smiled and said, in case you might need it. The fact that she thought of me and respected me as much as she did the countless other adults who were extremely successful, that was youth empowerment. Or another individual who was at the panel, his name is Mr. Anti P, again, because I cannot say that last name, which I apologize for because I'm actually quite friends with his daughter. He is, um, he's a Finnish activist that works around the world trying to instill peace rather than violence, more specifically in Africa and the Middle East. After the panel had finished, he approached me and said, though my ideas seemed optimistic, they made sense. And he encouraged me to go through with them, which surprised me because I didn't think anybody had listened. The fact that he did, that was youth empowerment. Or when Dr. Alaa Murebit, she's an international advocate for peace, one of the 12 individuals appointed by the UN Secretary General to protect the 12 Sustainable Development Goals, and the youngest nominee for the Harvard Award of Women Inspiring Change, invited me and my friends to sit with her at the lunch table. Now, let me give you the whole story. Moments before lunch had started, it was the general forum, and she had given this amazing speech. So amazing, in fact, that me and my friends who were sitting in the front row fell in love with her. We fell in love with her words, with her personality. We wanted to be like her. After her speech finished, we all stood up and quite embarrassingly, embarrassingly scram and clapped. And just imagine a room with a whole bunch of fancy businessmen and like, adults, and then there's just five kids like, yes, that was us. So after the forum had finished and it was lunchtime, we saw her sitting at her table and we desperately wanted to go up to her. Except we weren't quite sure if she wanted to sit with a whole bunch of fangirling kids. We were pointing at her, we were talking quite loudly in what I now call a failed excuse of stalking. <laughs> and we were basically just pointing at each other like, no, you go, you have to go up to her. But in the end, the unexpected happened. She invited us to sit with her. And you would think that in the presence of such a wonderful person, we'd talk about something of importance like solving poverty, ending world hunger, or the topic of the forum, ending child violence. But no, 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 as embarrassingly as it is, we talked about Justin Bieber, <laughs> and Shawn Mendes, and music. Despite that, the fact that she invited us, that was youth empowerment. See, youth empowerment is about creating opportunities for the youth to be involved, and following through on them, and in some cases, it's about believing in yourself enough to create your own opportunities and be brave enough to go through with them. Youth empowerment is about handing out business cards to those, though young and unexperienced, have massive potential. And in some cases, it's about believing in yourself and your own achievements enough to create your own business card. So youth empowerment is about inviting the youth to sit with you at the lunch table but youth empowerment is also creating your own lunch table and opening the seats for others to join you. So youth empowerment, most of all, is about believing in your talents, in your gifts, your ideas and achievements. It's about empowering yourself so you can empower others. So youth empowerment is about grabbing the opportunities you create or the world gives you. Youth empowerment is about taking control of your actions and your life in order to achieve what I believe every individual in the world can, greatness.